Lesson 11.7, Intermediate Value Theorem, you'll see it called IBT. If you want to write this down, this is what it means. It says, if a continuous function attains two values, so meaning there's um, two certain y values within a continuous function, it must also attain all the values between these two values. And so number one says, selected values of the continuous function f are shown in the table below. It is known that f prime of x, so the derivative of x is negative for all x in the interval two to seven. Determine the validity of this, the following statement. f of x equals zero has exactly one solution in the interval two to seven. The best thing that I could recommend is just sketching a graph of the points and then we can really tell what's happening. So we've got a point at two, five, let's say it's here, uh, four, negative one, seven, negative seven, something like that. And so what this definition means is it's continuous, it attains these values, it must also attain values in between them. So saying between y is five and y is negative one, there has to exist values between those two. And same thing for negative one and negative seven. We don't know if this goes up and down and up and down. We don't know what it does in between there, but we know it's gotta be something, right? It can do as much as it wants. And so it says y equals zero. So that means this right here has exactly one solution in the interval from two to seven. So do we know that it's gonna cross through the x-axis exactly one time? No, we don't. We know at least once, right? It has to go from five to negative one at least once, but it could go down and back up and down and back up and down as many times as it wants to and even between this interval. So we could say that it could be true or it could be false, we don't know if it's exactly one. If it would have said at least, then yes. Number two, selected values of the function f are shown in the table below. Determine the validity of the following statement. So again, I wanna graph these. Three, five, six, negative one, seven, one, 10, 16, 12, 32, somewhere up there. Uh, we know we are asked f of x or y equals zero has at least two solutions in the interval. So does it cross through here twice? At least twice, I should say. So it goes through once. And then it looks like it just does this. So it goes from positive to negative y back to positive y. So yeah, we know for sure that there's at least two places where it's gonna cross two. If it would have said exactly two, mm, we're not sure, but at least two has to be true. All right, and number three, selected values of the continuous function after shown the table below. It is known that the derivative of x is less than zero, so it's decreasing in the interval from negative two to three. Determine the validity of the following statement. Y equals negative four has exactly two solutions in the interval. This exactly makes me think, mm, don't know. Let's graph it real quick. So we got negative two, three, one, negative nine, and three, negative 21. Something like that behavior. <clears throat> and we wanna know at y equals negative four. So think about a horizontal line. How many times is our line gonna go through a y value of negative four? And so I know it's gonna cross through once. The other very, very important information is that f prime of x is negative throughout the whole interval of negative two to three. So this function could never come back up and cross that line again every time it should be decreasing somehow. It might have some crazy behavior like this or something, but still only one time. So that is definitely false. Could not be true ever.